Hey, hey, you guys. Welcome to Talk About It Thursdays, and I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you're on. I would love to say hello to you guys. I pray everybody's having an amazing Thursday. Uh, we are one more day closer to the weekend, you guys. So jump on when you get a chance, and I will not keep you long uh, today because I know we're busy. We wear many, many hats. And I salute everybody that's out there trying, that's doing their best, that's making a way out of no way. I salute you. Because it's hard. It's hard being an adult. We talked about adulting and how hard it was a couple of times ago. And it is hard. And it takes some effort. And it's not something that you do one time. It's something that you have to make up your mind to want to be your best self, to put your best effort forward every day. And for those of you that do that, I salute you guys. And last week we talked about he knocked it over. You know, we talked about how sometimes God knocks over our plans and knocks over our little, you know, aspirations because he's got something better for us. A lot of times we think we know so much, but we forget that God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. He knows everything. He knows the end from the beginning. So sometimes God has to change things up, even when we don't like it. He doesn't ask for our permission just so that he can get the best out of us so that his plan for your life will come to fruition. Hey, Kinsley, how are you? Happy Thursday. You guys, we're going to go ahead and get started today. Our topic today is called It Came to Pass. And I thought about this, I was listening to a pastor preach, you know, about how storms come through our lives and, and at the time it feels like the worst thing that could ever happen at the worst time, you know, and we've all gone through that when, you know, we think that we've got it going pretty well. Hey, Lindsay, we've got things going pretty well and then here comes that stumbling block, here comes that monkey wrench that gets thrown into our plans. So we just want to encourage you that even though those things are going to happen in your life, just understand that it didn't come to stay. It comes to pass. You know, there, there are things that God allows us to go through just to get us to our next level. And those things aren't meant to stay. Those things aren't meant to hurt you. They're not meant to, to break you, but they are meant to make you better. And so that's what I want to talk about. I just don't want you guys to let situations in life discourage you to the point where you give up. You know, and a lot of people have given up simply because, you know, they don't have a support system. Sometimes people have done the very best that they can with what they know. You know, all of us don't come from the same backgrounds. So what might be my best and what might be Kinsley's best or Lindsay's best may not be the same to everybody else. It's all about what we were raised around, what we were taught, what were we uh, influenced by in our life. And that's how we give our best, you know, based on our experiences. So I just want to encourage you guys to don't give up. Just understand that whatever's going on, it's not here to stay. It's temporary. It came to pass, you guys. That pain of the situation or that circumstance or that sickness, hey Sandra, or that sickness that can make you want to throw your hands up in the air and just want to give up, call on God. Ask God to help you, help you to see the purpose in the pain, the purpose in the situation that you're going through, and even the purpose in the sickness. You know, sometimes God takes us through things I know for me, uh, some things I've had to go through simply because I was hard-headed. You know, when God was talking to me soft and whispering to me and trying to hint here and show me signs there, sometimes I I went my own way. And sometimes I ignored things that I know were detrimental to me, especially when it comes to my health. You know, I, I understand what excess weight can do. I understand what not exercising can do. I understand what having boatloads of stress, uh, constant uh, anxiety, constant fear, you know, just being in bad situations, you know, home situations. I understand now what that can do to your body, you know, and 
because we tend to think that we can handle things that we truly can't, our body tends to suffer because of it. So just understand that even in the sickness, even in the pain, and even in that bad circumstance, God has a plan. And the more severe the pain or hurt, the better the odds are that you're going to feel like giving up. And what's so crazy about life, you know, God does things in his own timing. So a lot of times you'll be going through something and you're like, okay, where is God in this situation? Why isn't he stepping up, stepping in, handling this? God is going to move when it's his time to move. You know, God is a God of timing. You know, he won't move until it's time to move. So a lot of times it's something he's trying to break in us, something he's trying to teach us, something he's trying to strengthen in us. That's why you don't see his hand move. But just because you don't see his hand moving doesn't mean that it's not. God moves in the spirit. So a lot of things that God is doing in your life working on your body, working on that sickness, you know, you can't even see what he's doing in the background and in the spirit world. So don't think God has abandoned you just because your situation looks bad right now. Just understand that that came to pass. It's not here to stay. Most of us don't like to admit it, but we've experienced feelings of wanting to give up, just not trusting God, just feeling just exhausted by it all but that's human that's normal God knows and that's the time when you need to call on God and say you know what God I believe but help my unbelief I'm tired I'm exhausted the enemy's in my ear I'm fearful I'm stressed out I'm sleepy you know I, I just don't feel like fighting anymore and that's when your family comes into play that's why you need to have you a good support system because there's going to be a time in everybody's life, if it hasn't happened to you already, it's going to happen at some point where you feel like giving up and you're going to need that person, that friend to say, you know what, sis, you know what, I got you. You go ahead and lay down and rest. I got you. I'm going to start praying for you. I'm going to pray your strength in the Lord. Oh, brother, I'm going to pray for you. I understand you feel like you don't have nothing left. You just go over there. You just rest. I just want to make sure you eat and you get some rest. Let me pray on your behalf. That's why those people that truly love you and those intercessory prayers are so important, you guys, because they hold you up when you don't have any strength left. And don't be afraid to let people know that you're tired. So spiritually, physically, tired of praying, all of that. Let somebody know so somebody can step in and be that strength for you. That's what we're all supposed to do for one another. Not judge one another, but be there for one another. And because it's human to want to give up sometimes, especially when things are harder than you expect them to be. It's one thing when you think you got an idea of what you're about to go through. But then when you get in the midst of it and it's 10 times worse than what you anticipated, more than likely you're going to want to give up sometimes. And then another reason why we give up is lack of a good support system. A third reason is lack of planning and preparation. You know, we tend to not do our research on things. You know, when you know that you've got something you're about to have to face, if you know ahead of time, that's the time to do your research. Understand the worst case scenarios and the best case scenario so you can get your mind right, so you can get your spirit right for what you're about to go through. It's nothing like trying to tackle something that you're not prepared for. You're going to get surprises on every level. You're going to be up one minute, down the next. You're going to be stressed. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be depressed. You're going to be all over the place. If at all possible, whatever you know you're going to have to deal with, Find out everything about it that you can so that you can begin to pray about those things. So that you can, you know what to pray against when you know what the obstacles are going to be. And see, that's another reason why you need to get prepared. Get prepared so you can, you can go to God and say, I will not have these side effects, blah, 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 blah. I will not have to be in rehab for such and such and such a period of time. 
That way you can speak against those things and ask God to go before you and you can prepare the way so that everything goes a lot smoother. But when you're prepared and you know what you can speak against and you know what to ask for, your prayers become more specific. And that's what you want. You want some specific things to happen in your life because God loves a prepared person. Another reason why some people give up, some of us are just spoiled. We're used to everybody doing everything for us, fixing everything for us. And then as soon as we can't fix it after one or two tries, we want to give up. You know, we want to throw a temper tantrum. We want to cry about it and, and call everybody about it and, and act like it's the end of the world when it's something that came to pass. But a lot of times we handicap even our children, you guys, by not allowing them to to feel some pain sometimes. You know, and as a parent, as an aunt, you know, uh, you don't want to see them hurt. I don't want to see my kids hurt. I don't want to see my nieces and nephews hurt. But I understand now that that's part of the process. That's part of them learning how to be a strong individual. The, the hurt has to come with it. You don't get to bypass hurt to build strength. That's just like when you're working out. No pain, no gain is what they say. And same way in the spirit, you know, our lives are meant to help us get better and better and better. And sometimes it's going to be some pain involved with that. Number five, the fifth reason why people want to give up sometimes is sometimes you don't even believe in yourself. You don't believe you can make it. You don't believe you can do it. You know, and you don't believe uh, you're going to have people that are going to help you. You talk yourself out of things before it even happens because of how you feel about yourself. Hey, Christia, about how you feel about yourself. So some of us have such a lack of confidence in ourselves and in other people, and we give up too easy. Because just because it didn't work the first time, we start doubting ourselves and start saying, well, I'm not going to be able to do it. Until you've exhausted every single possibility, every ounce of strength within you, then you can't tell me you can't do something. Christia knows I mean that when I say that. I'm going to push you. I don't care what you're complaining about. I don't care what you say you can't do. I'm going to push you until I know you have exhausted every single possibility, every ounce of strength that you have. Because I hate to see people give up when God is just wanting you to learn how to persevere. He wants you to learn how to be patient and wait on him. Another reason why people tend to give up on things that just come to pass that are temporary is fear of failure. Nobody likes to fail. It's embarrassing to fail. But you have to get to a point in your life to where you can't worry about what other people think about you. And it took me a long time to get to that point, and I'm 95% there. You know, once I make up my mind about something, I'm not trying to hear what you're talking about, your opinion about it, or whether you think I can do it or not. You have to understand that failure comes with it. Failure is a teacher. A failure teaches you what to do differently the next time. Failure is not something that you should be ashamed of because failure is a teacher. It teaches you. It, it gives you wisdom once you fail because now you can roll back in your mind, okay, what did I do? Why did that not work? You know, and you can go back to the drawing board and you can try something else. Number seven, the reason that people tend to uh, give up when something is just coming to pass, we have not been taught how to be patient. We've not taught how to be diligent, and we have not been taught how to persevere. You know, it's all about our upbringing, up, I'm sorry, upbringing and what we've experienced in life and whether we've allowed God to shape us and mold us and mature us. You know, in order for God to shape us, sometimes he has to break us down and rebuild us because we've got all of that mess and junk and trash from our childhood, everything we saw people do wrong, everything we were taught wrong, all those bad influences that were put in front of us. You know, God has to tear those things down sometimes just so he can show you 
that there's a better way, that there's a better life. And the only way he can teach you how to be patient is to make you wait on some things. The only way he can teach you how to be diligent is to make it hard to make you have to keep trying and keep going. And the only way you'll learn how to persevere is if God puts a desire in your heart and he gives you that sense of, I can do this. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to give up because I know this is what I'm meant to do. That is something that only God can teach you. And so a lot of times we give up because we haven't enriched our relationship with God and allowed him to impart those things into us. Number eight reason why we give up sometime on temporary things that just come to pass, we don't trust in God. You know, we see the situation for what it is. We panic. We want to fix it ourselves. We don't want to pray about it. We want an instant answer. We want a microwave answer, a microwave fix. And God doesn't work like that. He's not Santa Claus. You can't just go to him and say, God, I need this, 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 and this, and it just drop out of the sky. So a lot of times we don't know how to trust in God and understand that when things don't work out or if I'm in this situation, I must be here for a reason. God must be doing something in, in my life. See, you don't talk like that unless you've gotten close to God, unless you've got a relationship. You know, when you don't have a relationship with God, you fall apart when everything comes at you. Everything, anything that hits you, anybody that looks at you wrong, you throw a big deal out of it. You throw a temper tantrum, you throw a pity party. But when you have allowed yourself to spend some time with God and allow God to remove some of that silliness from you, some of that immaturity from you, you will understand that, you know, you will change the language, you know, even with tears in your eyes, you'll say to God, you know, God, I know you're watching over me. God, I know you want what's best for me. And if I'm in this situation or, or if I'm dealing with this, you have to have a reason for it because I trust you and I take you at your word when you say that your plans for me are good and not to harm me. You want me to prosper and have a good end. So you have to trust that and, and able to be able to trust God. Number nine, reason why people give up. They worry about appearances, trying to impress other people. You know, don't want to look bad to this person. Don't want this person talking about them. You will spend your life miserable if you care about the court of public opinion. You know, people will, and I'm a witness to this because I've had it happen to me. People will love you one day and they will talk about you the next. And you won't have to have done anything to them. People change their minds about you all the time. So why do we put so much respect on what other people think about us when we know people are wishy-washy? When we know people will flip-flop on you depending on the circumstance? Why do we give them so much power over us? That's something you're going to have to ask yourself. Why do I do that? But worrying about appearances will make you give up on something that's just temporary. And then the tenth reason why people give up, pride. And men, I want to talk to y'all about that. You know, because y'all have been conditioned to not feel, to not allow stuff to get to you, not allow um, anybody to make you look bad. You know, and that's that pride that's been instilled in y'all since y'all were little boys, you know. And it was always that, you know, the men had to hold their head up and stick their chest out all the time. Sometimes you don't feel like that. Sometimes a storm will come that's so bad that'll drop you to your knees. You know, and that's why a lot of times you don't see men worshiping. It's because it's their pride. You know, they, they feel funny about falling to their knees or falling on their face you know, in front of everybody. So a lot of times God has to allow you to go through things to get you to a point where you don't care anymore about who is looking at you. And God will break you down to the point where you surrender and you're not embarrassed to get down on your knees. You don't care because it's between you and God. 
So a lot of that pride we've instilled in our young boys and we don't explain to them. Pride is a beautiful thing, but pride is also a detrimental thing if you don't handle it right. So we don't ever teach them that. So they feel like they don't have the right to cry in front of anybody. They don't have the right to show weakness. They don't have the right to just surrender in front of us. Ladies, if you have a husband or a significant other, I need you to make them understand that it's okay if they're not strong all the time. It's okay if you need to cry sometimes. I won't think less of you if you do that because it's hard out here for these men and it's hard for the us women, but men carry so much weight on their shoulder because we have taught them that they have to present themselves in a certain way or they're not real men. So women, if you have a significant other, let that person know that you see them, that you understand that they hurt just like you hurt. Let them know that you understand they get tired just like you get tired. Let them know that it's okay for them to show emotion and that you won't ridicule them or make fun of them or, or make them feel like it's not okay in front of you. Because simply if that person is who you're supposed to be with, there should be nothing you can't say. There should be no emotion you can't feel. You know, that person shouldn't think anything less of you if they're the one you're supposed to be with. Now, what if I told you that everything that hurt you had a purpose? What if I told you everything that hurt you was temporary and it wasn't meant to stay? And I say that because a lot of times we don't realize we keep ourselves in bad situations simply because we don't let go when God tells us to let go. And that's why we hurt longer. It's not that God wanted that thing to stay so long. We won't let it leave. And I've done that before, trying to fix something that God has told me to let go of, leave it alone. And then I wonder why this storm is staying in my life so long. It's not that God is making it stay. You're making it stay because you're being disobedient. So a lot of things that come up in our life that last for a long period of time, we need to check our obedience level. What is it God told you to do that you didn't do? There's a reason why whatever you're going through just seems like it won't pass because God sent it as temporary. So if it's been there for a long time and won't, won't seem to want to leave, there's something that you are being disobedient about. And once you become obedient to God's word and do what God tells you to do in that situation, it's going to pass. I have proof of that simply because look at what you've already been through and it didn't stay. We've gone from journey to journey, from situation to situation. It didn't stay. At some point you had to do what you had to do in order for that situation to be over. So that's proof that it didn't come to stay. Another proof is God promises that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. And that scripture is Psalm 30 and 5. So that lets you know God doesn't mean for whatever's hurting you, whatever uh, is upsetting you, whatever circumstance that's not right for you. He doesn't mean for it to stay. He has an end to it. That's the morning. So he's trying to let you know that it's not going to stay there forever. But you've got to do your part in the situation in order to make it move a little bit faster. Number three, what you went through, it changed you in some kind of way. Most of us, you know, it changes us for the better. Sadly enough, you know, you can go through some things that are horrific, that are so traumatic that it will change you for the worst. And that's when your friends need to come in and that's when your support system needs to be there for you and help you to get back to where you need to be. Because every situation, you know, is not meant for you to handle by yourself. And a lot of times, and I was telling my friend Rita about this, I said, you know, we're Tauruses. 
we're stubborn and we've tried to handle so much pain by ourselves. God did not mean for us to to keep all of that stuff to ourselves. And that's why we stayed in some of the situations that we stayed in so long because we were being disobedient out of pride, uh, out of low self-esteem, out of worrying about what other people, everything that I got on that list, that's what was happening in my life and with her life. We had a waiting to exhale girlfriend this weekend, uh, girls weekend, sleepover this weekend. And I learned a lot about my friends. And I thank God that we were able to be open and talk about some things because I didn't realize some of the things they had gone through in the time that we were not so close. You know, we had gaps in time where we were dealing with our own stuff and in different cities, this, that, and the other. But she and I, we went through some of the same similar things living in the same town. But because we were ashamed, because we were uh, feeling like we let other people down or we were worried about how people would view us. Hey, Lisa, we suffered in silence when we could have been the support for one another. So understand everything that you go through is not meant for you to endure by yourself. A lot of times God is unctioning you to, to reach out to somebody and it's your own pride that pulls you back and makes you have to go through it all on your own and without support. Number four, God promises to be a healer. That's how we know that that situation is not going to stay because light and dark can't exist in the same place and Jesus is light. So that dark situation, when Jesus comes in, it's got to move. So understand that God promises to be our healer and by his stripes we are healed. And that's Isaiah 53 and 5. And you have to believe on those things. You know, a lot of times we get ourselves in situations and then we start saying, you know what, well, God is not gonna, gonna take care of this situation because I got myself into it. You're always getting yourself in something. So if, if that was the case, he wouldn't heal us from anything. So, so don't start trying to think for God. Just go to God as a child and be humble and ask him to help you. Quit trying to second guess God about what God will do for me and what he won't. That's what gets us in trouble because we try to make God think like a human. And God is not like us. He doesn't hold those things against us like we do against one another. And God says in his word that he would be our defender. You know, God even speaks to us about how we have power life and death is in the power of our tongue and how if we believed we have the same power that jesus had and in uh, matthew 18 and 20 it says truly i tell you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So a lot of times those things, those situations we're going through, we haven't bound those things. We haven't put those things under our feet. We haven't pled the blood of Jesus over those things. We just deal with them and we complain about them. But God is telling us we have power. We have power to bind those things. We have power to loose blessings, loose healing, loose prosperity. But we just keep dealing day to day as if we have no power within us. And that's the sad part about it, is God gives us these things. But if you're not willing to receive them, then there's nothing more he can do about that. And a lot of times, you know, we deal with people uh, that, that have hurt us or, or aren't acting right. Those kids aren't acting right. That spouse we don't deal with the spirit. We deal with that person. And that's why you end up in such turmoil and chaos because you're not looking at it from the spiritual side. There's a reason that person is acting the way that they're, they're acting. There's a spirit that's causing that person to do some of the things that they do. But we would rather deal with the flesh than deal with the spirit. And then number six, every storm has a purpose. The trial, the obstacle that you go through, it didn't come to stay. We go from one text to, test to the next in life. It comes to pass. And if it didn't, none of us would ever get to the next level. And none of us would ever be 
able to continue and grow if the storm didn't pass. So that was, it came to pass when it comes to storms. I wanna do a flip side of it, come, it came to pass. This one says, number one, you will have what you say. Number two, you will have what you believe. Number three, you will have what you are willing to trust God and walk into. Hey, Miss Christelle. So let's talk about I will have what I say. Like I said before, your words have power. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's Proverbs 18 and 21. Do you know that you can break a child down with your words? Do you know that you can cause a lasting effect on somebody just about something that you said today with an evil spirit, with a, with a mean spirit? Do you know that that carries with them for years and years and years? Some people never get over what you say or how you said it. And so you have put death on that person because there's a part of them that died because of the words that came out of your mouth. Same thing when it comes to our children. If you wonder why little Johnny is acting the way he's acting, guess what? You're always telling him he's bad. You're always telling him he act like his daddy. Hey, William, you're always telling him that, that you know, the boogeyman gonna get him if he don't act right. You know, we say little silly stuff to our kids and then we wonder why they act the way they do. You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You know, we need to learn how to bridle this tongue. If we don't have something that's going to put life or, or give life to somebody or, or spark something amazing inside of them, sometimes we just need to stay quiet, get back. If you see something in their personality that you don't like, sometimes you are not the one that's meant to talk to them about that. So that's why you have to be careful to make sure you check yourself. What kind of relationship do you have with that person before you walk up on them and start telling them about themselves? So you have to ask God to give you discernment about what to say and what not to say because you don't want to come off as somebody's judge because honestly, none of us can judge anybody else. We all got our own mess we got to deal with. We all got our own skeletons we got to deal with. So none of us has the right to judge anybody. So be careful with your words. Do you know, husbands and wife, that you can sever your love connection with your spouse just by your words? You know, a lot of times people want to say, oh, well, you know, they've been married a long time. Why they let that bother them? Because some things just should not be said. There's levels of respect that should not be crossed when you're married. Even when you're in a serious relationship, you can change the way that person looks at you forever just by the things that come out of your mouth. You can cause that person to turn away from you. You can lose your connection that you're supposed to have because when you get married, you're supposed to be one. But do you know that you can slowly sever that connection by the words that come out of your mouth when you're always nagging, when you're always criticizing, when you're always making that person feel like what they're doing is not enough? You know, life and death is in the power of the tongue. When you want a relationship to last, you got to speak life into it. You got to believe what you cannot see. And therefore, you will have what you say. Number two, our words create our world. Whatever directions your world lead, your mind and your body will follow. So be careful about your words because wherever your words are leading you to, your mind and your body are going to follow. Number three, any problem that you keep dwelling on and talking about all the time, it tends to get bigger. Think about those times when you just talked about something, talked about something, and how you kept having to deal with it. You gave it too much attention. You watered it. So it just kept growing, kept growing, kept growing. So you have to be careful about what's coming out of your mouth, that conversation, because you will have what you say and it will come to pass. And then number four, when you speak into the world, it governs your decisions. 
Whatever you speak into the world, it's going to govern your decision. Whatever you're communicating about, most often, it's going to govern how you act, how your attitude is, you know, how you treat other people, whether bad or good. So you have to be careful about your conversation and make sure your conversation is about salt and life, not talking about people and, and killing people with your words and with your your perception of who you think they are. Because a lot of times you don't really know people. You know what you think you know about them. But a lot of times we'll start putting our mouth on things that we don't understand. And number five, like I said before, we have to be careful of the words that we say to our children and about our children. Because you're either going to build them up are you going to tear them down and it's going to last a lifetime? So let's talk about what you believe. Number one, have you ever taken the time to notice what words you're actually using every day? Sit down and think about what your conversation is every day. If you're unhappy with your life or if your life seems to be in a rut or if your life seems like you're going through one dramatic situation after another, Sit down and think about what are you talking about every day? Because something needs to change if you want your situation to change. Number two, when you say something, you are programming your brain to believe it. That's why you have to be careful. You know, when you start saying, well, you know, I want to do this, but girl, I'm not good at that. So you've already told your brain you're not good at it. And you haven't even tried. I'm not smart enough to do that. Girl, so-and-so is doing that, but I don't think I can do that. And you know what? Your brain says, you can't do that. And therefore, you'll never try. So you're programming your brain to believe what's coming out of your mouth. So be careful about that. When you talk about how you look and, and nobody's going to love me until I lose 50 pounds, this, that, and the other, you are programming your brain to believe that. Hey, Sonia, to believe that. When you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm just not pretty at all. I'm just ugly. You know, you're going to walk around and you're going to carry yourself that way because no matter how many people tell you you're beautiful, if you have programmed your brain to believe that you're not, you're never going to believe what they say. And when you've made up your mind that you're not good enough and you're always tearing yourself down with your words, your brain will not allow you to even have a desire to do some of the things that you probably would be good at if you gave it a try. Number three, and we believe what we tell ourselves. Our children believe about themselves what they hear about themselves, especially from people they love and trust. That's their parents, that's their siblings, that's their teachers, that's, um, you know, just church members. You know, what they hear about themselves matters. That's why when kids get older and get in the adolescent phase and then they start wanting their independence and want to hang around with their friends more. What their friends say about them matters to them because guess what? No matter what any of y'all got to say, their friends have more of a say at a certain point in their life and you can't tell them nothing. As long as their friends saying this, that, and the other, that's what they believe. So you have to understand, you have to instill a good level of self-esteem in your children while they're young. You have to constantly groom them and make them understand to be their own person, that you don't have to be what somebody else says that you are, that you don't have to conform to acting a certain way just to be liked by other people. We, we skip some things in raising our children. And I think about it now, and I wish I knew some of the things that I know now while I'm ra when I was raising my kids, because I would have given my boys words of affirmation every day. They would have had a note every day on the mirror, you know, just of how strong they were, how smart they were, you know, how proud of them I am, you know. So a lot of times 
we get so caught up in the raising and the providing and to making sure they go to school, keeping them out of trouble, uh, feeding them, you know, all the keeping a roof over their head. You know, we get caught up in those things and we forget about those small things that's going to make them into the people that they are going to be when they're adults. Hey, chick. So we have to understand that we believe what we tell ourselves and our children do too. So be careful what you're saying about these children. Be careful about calling somebody's child bad. You know, and I hate it when, when I compliment a child and the parents say, oh, he's just bad. I can't, that cringes in me because it's like, do you know what you're doing? You're teaching him that that's what you expect of him to be bad because that's all he knows. That's all he hears. Is, is that you're telling people that he's bad. So why should he change his behavior? Because he believes that's what he's supposed to do. Because that's what he hears. Number four, understand that if your words get you into a situation, your words can also get you out of it. You just have to turn whatever you did to get into it, turn it around. And you have to believe that you're not hopeless, that this situation is not hopeless, that there is a, a rescue for whatever you're going through. And you have to believe that. And you have to believe that God is able to turn your life around. But until you believe that, a lot of times you're going to be stuck in the same situation because you're saying the same things to yourself about, well, I can't do this. I can't get out of this. I can't afford this. I can't do that. Stop saying those things about yourself and understand those same words you're using. Flip those words and remind yourself that you can do anything through Christ who strengthens you, that, that you are ahead and you're not beneath. You know, you have to speak those things over yourself because what you say to yourself, you will begin to believe. Number three, what are you willing to trust God for and walk into? One, what part of your life are you willing to trust God with? You know, a lot of times we piece off little parts of our life that we want to give to God. But God's answer is he wants it all. He doesn't want a piece here, a piece there. And so therefore, a lot of our reasons why things come and they don't pass through is simply because we're piecing parts of our life off to God. And so God's like, okay, you piecing this off to me, I guess you must like this situation because I'm not going to change it until you give me everything, until you give me all of you, until you surrender everything to me. Because obviously you're trying to hold on to some stuff. That's why you're giving me a piece over here and a piece over there. So a lot of times we are not willing to trust God with our life and give God every part of our life. Number two, we have to remember that God is the great equalizer. This is why we should never worry about paying back people that hurt us. You know, I'm learning as I get older, you know, I'm seeing people uh, from my past and they're reaching out to me and they've gone through some stuff. And some of these people really hurt me. Some of those people really betrayed me. But God, I can say, he will repay. And it's not going to be what you think it should be. God has an answer for everything. And so therefore, just like he says in his word, we reap what we sow. God is the one that decides what, what you're going to reap for what you do when you do things that are not right. And so you have to understand that you don't have to worry about revenge. It'll come to pass because God says in Romans 12 and 19, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So stop worrying about who hurt you, who did this. Let those people go, forgive them, move on with your life, and just know that God will repay. It will come to pass. Number three, God's plan will come to pass, but you have to trust him. Even when you can't trace him, even when you don't understand what he's doing or where he's leading your life. You have to be willing to trust God to do what God does best. God created you. Therefore, God knows what's in you. God knows where he wants you to go in life. And you have to surrender some of your desires in order for God to get you to where you need to be. 
And he talks about it in his word in Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So you have to trust in everything that God has a plan, a hope a future for you because God cannot lie. He says it in his word. Number four is often, oftentimes we trust only in physical things. It's hard to trust sometimes in things you can't physically touch or see. But once you recognize that God has been opening doors and making ways in your life, your whole life, it gets easier to want to trust in him because when you can think back on how you were in this situation and you didn't think you were going to make it, how how they lied on you, but God still blessed you. You know, you have to look back over your life and understand that nobody did some of the things in your life but God. You know, whether you want to recognize it or not, because the things that should have happened to you, God didn't let it come to pass. Okay? And number five, Remember that if it broke you, God can heal you. There is nothing in this world that you've done. There is nothing that somebody else can do to you that God can't heal you from. God is always willing and able to heal you. And he says in his word that nothing can separate you from his love. And therefore, he's not going to leave you broken. You just have to forgive yourself. You have to forgive other people and you have to forgive yourself for what you don't know you know a lot of things you don't know you weren't taught you know and you get yourself in these situations and a lot of times you feel like well God doesn't want me I'm damaged I'm used I, I did this I did that but you have to remember God doesn't think like you God is not man God wants you any way he can get you he wants you to come just like you are because no matter who left you or how they left you or who hurt you, who abused you, who used you, God is still God. He has not changed his mind about you. And I know it's hard when you're trying to do your best, you know, be the best person that you can. And you have to witness other people that only half do or just do the bare minimum or do little deceitful things or sneaky or lie to get what they need and what they want. And they really seem like they're prospering. But God wants you to take courage and be encouraged in his scripture of Psalms 37, 1 and 2. He says, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be envious. Don't be jealous of anybody, you guys. If somebody's doing better than you, so be it. Applaud them, appreciate them, congratulate them, and mean it from your heart. Because you don't know what they done been through to get there. You don't know what that path is going to lead them to. You have no idea what God is doing in that situation. So don't be envious against workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like grass. Trust in the Lord and do good so that you can dwell in the land and be fed. God is going to give you what you need. You just can't get weary and well-doing. That's why it's not good to keep your eye on other people and see what's going on at their house and what they got and this, that, and the other. And social media makes it hard to keep your eyes on your own page. Because people that like to flaunt, they like to, you know, parade everything that's happening in their life on social media. But you have to be mature enough to, to, to have the mindset of, you know what, if that's what God wants for them, that's great. I'm happy for them. That may not be my portion. And you have to understand that and you have to be okay with that. But you can't allow those things and then you start judging and saying well that person cheated that person lied that person did this don't worry about why they got what they got you just pay attention to what's going on in your life and just know that if they can get blessed god is going to bless you too it may not be the same way they're being blessed but it doesn't have to be you have to resolve in your mind that god loves me and god is going to take care of me and i'm going to have everything that i need and my final thought, you guys, is storms come in and out of our lives. But when they pass, it leaves us changed forever. 
It is our hope that with each storm, we are left with more wisdom, more knowledge, and more understanding. This is the way we can begin speaking, believing, and trusting God's favor to come to pass in our lives. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I really um, want to thank y'all for supporting the page and supporting the podcast. I could not do this without you guys. So thank you for helping me be better. Because the fact that I have to come before you, uh, God really prepares me throughout the week to come before you. It's really helping me grow and helping me to be a better person than I was uh, the year before, the year before that. So I am grateful for my growth. I am grateful just for how I'm learning and how I'm learning to share what God gives me. So thank you guys so much for your support and just keep on Keep on coming. We're going to all get better. And before you know it, it's going to be a new year. And we're going to look back and say, oh, my God, I am not the person I used to be. And you're going to thank God for it. So, guys, have a great weekend. Y'all stay safe. Stay COVID free. And I love you guys. And I will see y'all next week. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.